Apologia, 8th grade, Physical Science, Week 8, Day 4, textbook pages 127 to 133, notebook pages 102 to 103. Um, let's talk about the types of chemical bonding. We've already discussed ionic bonds. An ionic bond is a chemical bond formed between oppositely charged ions. Uh, so let's just review. We've discussed how atoms in groups 1a, 2a, 3a, and 7a transfer electrons to form ionic bonds and make ionic compounds. The new bond we're gonna learn about today is a covalent bond. So we know that group 1a, 2a, 3a, and 7a essentially give away or transfer their electrons. Um, what happens with the atoms with four, five, and six valence electrons? Well, atoms in these groups tend to share electrons with other atoms. In fact, the diatomic molecules such as oxygen gas, O2, that we've already talked about share electrons. Bonds that form because of shared electrons are called covalent bonds. So the official definition of a covalent bond is a chemical in which two atoms share one or more pairs of valence electrons. Hydrogen atoms have one electron. It can give up that electron and then it would become a hydrogen ion. Or it could share that electron with another atom. If hydrogen shares its electron with another hydrogen atom, together they would have two valence electrons. Now think about helium. Helium has two valence electrons, making its outer shell full. So helium has two valence electrons and it has a stable electron configuration. When two hydrogen atoms each share their electron with the other in a covalent bond, they achieve the same stable electron configuration as helium. So look in this figure, 4.14, shows a model of a hydrogen gas molecule. And a molecule is a neutral group of atoms that are joined together by covalent bonds. In the case of H2, both electrons travel around both nuclei. If you think back to the other diatomic molecules that we talked about, you'll remember that most of the halogen gases, such as chlorine, are diatomic molecules. So that means that while chlorine will accept an electron from a metal and form an ion, it will also share a valence electron with another chlorine atom to form a covalent bond. All right, so let's look at figure 415. This figure shows a diagram of the molecule chlorine gas. The electrons are shown positioned in pairs because each orbital of each energy level can hold two electrons. The electrons on the chlorine atom on the right are different color so that you can see how the electrons are shared. You can see that each chlorine atom shares one of its valence electrons with the other atom. All right, so chlorine, we have on the left side, we have it in black, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This guy, this chlorine atom needs one um, electron to be happy. This guy who has the blue um, electrons, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This guy needs one to be um, stable and happy. So they end up sharing. So you can see um, we have one black and one blue valence electron. So um, this gives both atoms eight valence electrons. So then what keeps the chlorine atoms together in this molecule? It is the attractions between the shared electrons and the protons in each nucleus that holds the atoms together in covalent bonds. The shared electrons travel around both nuclei because of this attraction.
Like with ionic bonds, it is easier to use electron dot diagrams to show covalent bonds. We don't need to be drawn around the Bohr model for everything. So figure 416 shows the electron dot diagram for the reaction to make Cl2. Again, we have seven valent electrons for each chlorine. Then over here, you can see that they're each sharing um, each other's valent electron. But wait, there is an even easier solution. So what is the even easier way? Well, it is called the structural formula model. It is for a molecule or a compound. In a structural formula, the bonds and positions of the atoms are shown. Figure 4.17 shows the structural formula for Cl2. In the structural formula, the dot pairs of each covalent bond are replaced with a dash. The dots do not need to be added because it is implied that there is a stable electron configuration with the covalent bond. So once again, this is the structural formula for Cl2. A dash represents a covalent bond, so none of the little dots are needed. Now let's go back to the question about groups 4a, 5a, or 6a elements. What do they do since they need more than one electron to have a stable electron configuration? Let's look at the oxygen gas first. So oxygen is six valence electrons. If two oxygen atoms shared a pair of electrons, each one would only have seven valence electrons, which would still not be stable, um, a stable electron configuration. But what? if the oxygen atoms each shared two. So that would give it one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So, um, but what if they each shared two electrons? Then they would have a full outer energy level with eight valence electrons. Each pair of shared electrons would be represented by a long dash and a structural formula. So this first dash is the first bond. The second one is a double bond. So when two atoms share two pairs of electrons, the bond is called a double bond. Now think about nitrogen, which is a group 5A element. It has five electrons in its outer energy level. If two nitrogen atoms each shared one electron, they would only have six valence electrons, which would still not be stable. So if they each shared two electrons, they would each still only have seven valence electrons. But if they each shared three electrons, then they would each have the eight valence electrons needed for a stable electron configuration. So here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So this nitrogen atom is happy. And this nitrogen atom, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This one is happy. Each one is sharing three valence electrons. When two atoms share three pairs of electrons, the bond is called a triple bond. And it is represented by three long dashes in the structural formula one for each covalent bond. So first bond, second bond, third bond, triple bond. So now, what about group 4A? So again, group 4A has four valence electrons. Carbon is an example of a group 4A element. These elements can form four covalent bonds with other atoms. A good example in the compound methane, which is CH4. Methane is a powerful greenhouse gas and consists of one carbon atom sharing an electron with four hydrogen atoms, each sharing their electron. By sharing these electrons, each hydrogen atom has two electrons. So now hydrogen's happy because it each, each hydrogen has two in their outer shell. So hydrogen is happy. And the carbon now has eight electrons. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So carbon is happy as well. All atoms have a stable electron configuration. So the electron dot and structural formulas for methane are here. So this is the electron dot.
for methane, and this is the structural formula for methane. All right, so far, all the bonds we've been talking about have been equal bonds. An equal bond means that the attraction for the shared electrons is equal between the nuclei of the atoms. But what happens if there is an unequal attraction? All right. Except for the noble gases, elements on the right side of the periodic table generally have a greater attraction for electrons than elements on the left side. So let's go ahead and remove our noble gases. So this, the right side, so these guys over here tend to have a greater attraction for electrons than these guys over here. Also, elements at the top of a group generally have a greater attraction for electrons than that of elements at the bottom of a group. So pretty much we're right around here is, is going to be one of the strongest attractions. So if you were to look back at the periodic table, which element do you think is the greatest attraction for electrons? Well, we sort of just said that. F, fluorine. Fluorine on the top of group 7A has the strongest attractions for electrons when it makes, um, which makes it the most reactive nonmetal. When two atoms of the same element form a covalent bond, both nuclei have the same attraction for electrons. But in a compound where you have two or more atoms of different elements, the attraction for electrons may not be equal. Unequal attractions mean unequal sharing of electrons. For example, when hydrogen reacts with chlorine, each atom shares one electron and the compound hydrochloric acid is produced. It's easy to see why the chlorine nucleus will attract the shared electrons most. Chlorine has 17 protons in its nucleus and hydrogen has one. The greater positive charge pulls more strongly on the electrons. Since chlorine atoms have a greater attraction for electrons than hydrogen atoms do, the shared electrons spend more time near the chlorine atom than they would near the hydrogen atom. So here we see figure 4.22, models of hydrochloric acid. The 3D ball and stick model over here, the structural formula, here and the 3D space filling model, these all three represent hydrochloric acid. A covalent bond in which the electrons are not shared equally is called a polar covalent bond. In this context, polar means opposite in charge, similar to how the two poles of a bar magnet are opposite in terms of their magnetic field. Because the electrons spend more time around the atom with the greater attraction for electrons when atoms form a polar covalent bond, that atom will have a partial negative charge. Again, don't forget, electrons are negatively charged. That's why if it spends more time around the atom with a greater attraction, it would be more negative whereas the atom with the lesser attraction for electrons will have a partial positive charge. To show which atom has which partial charge, scientists use the lowercase Greek letter delta, followed by either a plus or a minus sign. So look at this image, the symbol, this guy, delta minus, is written next to the chlorine atom to show it has a partial negative charge on that side of the compound. This symbol, delta plus, is written next to the hydrogen atom to show it has a partial positive charge on that side. Anytime you have a compound made of only two different atoms held together by a polar covalent bond, like hydrochloric acid, the molecule is considered to be a polar molecule. A polar molecule is a molecule that has slight positive and negative charges due to imbalance in the way electrons are shared. But if you have a compound made up of more than two atoms, it becomes a little more difficult to determine if the molecule is polar. To help decide if a molecule is polar, chemists look at the types of atoms and the shape of the molecule.
For example, look at the two molecules in figure two, 4.23. Both molecules are made of one central atom with two atoms on either side. So we have carbon in the center and there are two oxygens on each side. In carbon dioxide, CO2, there are double bonds between the carbon atom and each oxygen atom. Oxygen has a greater attraction for electrons than carbon does, so each double bond is a polar covalent bond. But look at the shape of the molecule. The three atoms form a straight line called a linear shape. Because the carbon-oxygen double bonds are directly opposite each other, the pull on the electrons from each oxygen atom is equal. So because the pull on the electrons is equal from both sides, they cancel each other out, and even though CO2 has polar bonds, it is a nonpolar molecule. All right. Now look at the water molecule, H2O. Again, oxygen has a greater attraction for electrons than hydrogen, so there is a single polar covalent bond between oxygen and each hydrogen. So we have our both of our hydrogens with our oxygen. This time, however, the molecule has a bent shape, so the polar bonds do not cancel each other out. Water is a polar molecule. Since the two hydrogen atoms are located at the same side of the molecule, we have our two hydrogens up here, opposite the oxygen atom, the hydrogen side of the molecule has a partial positive charge. The oxygen side of the molecule has a partial negative charge because the two shared electrons spend more time around the oxygen atom than they then around the hydrogen atom. So what we're saying is the electrons spend more time down here than they do up here. That's why this becomes a partial negative charge and this becomes the partial positive charge. It's important to remember that all polar compounds will contain polar bonds, but not all compounds that contain polar bonds are polar. So the polarity of water gives it many important properties. Polarity simply means having opposite charges within the same substance. All right. Experiment 4.1, the polarity of water, will be continued in the next video.